hear that. This meeting is being recorded. All right. So welcome again to Skin Topics. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker this afternoon as Rick Gonzalez. And I've known him ever since he was a principal at John Long Middle School in Grafton. Uh, he is a member of the Oneida Nation and as a tribal leader, he has blessed beautiful and mighty surgeon during our, our surgeon fest for at least a half a dozen years. As, the, as a cultural artist, he creates baskets from deer antlers uh, and uses the baskets to explain Iroquois history and culture. I have a little example here, it's a little picture, but I'm sure he's gonna show you more as we go through the program here today. Uh, he's a thought after lecturer with an expertise in Indian boarding schools as many children, including his mother, were taken and sent to various schools. Today he will weave a cultural wisdom and practice about the gifts of the maple trees, surgeon, and even the awakening strawberries and other seeds. We're so blessed to have him here today. So without further delay, take it away, Rick. Okay. You can go, you can go. Thank you. Sagoli Swakwegu Latanyatha ni Horonosani. Orio de Aga, Latinyasa. I welcomed you, and I welcome you to my house. As Mary noted before, in the background, you will see a variety of expressions, not of art, of my life, and the life of my mother, and the life of our people. We are Horonosani in our language. We are not Iroquois, although that is the very common term that is used for the Iroquois Confederation, as you commonly perhaps have heard. The word Iroquois is a derogatory term, but it has current usage to define us. It was given to us by the Algonquin, it is believed, and it sort of means to snake people. Well, I have a great phobia about snakes and I'm not a snake person. I am Haudenosaunee. That is our word. Haudenosaunee means people of the long house tradition. But even there, you have to have a further understanding of what the long house tradition is. I suspect many of you are seeing a physical building that we lived in back in New York State where we are from originally. These literal long houses, they were like condominiums. Each section, depending upon the great length of the long house, was sectioned out for families. So mother and father and brothers and sisters with their smoke fire lived in one section. Down the longhouse was your neighbor right there, and down and down and down. That's a longhouse. It contains life. It contains wisdom. It contains our ceremonies, our rituals. But it's confined within the forest. It's near the waters. So today we're going to be talking about that forest, the rivers, the wisdom, the future, the babies. We're going to be talking about, in a sense, what we refer to as the seven generations. When our leaders who were elected by women, we were uh, a mat uh, excuse me, a matriarchy, excuse me, a matriarchy. We followed the line, the family line, of our mothers, not the dads. Women have power. They had the right to vote. They were politically astute. They were involved in religious affairs. They nominated our men into positions of power and wisdom and leadership. And guess what, ladies? Our ladies also had the right of impeachment. Oh. <laughs> So if we did not use our royane correctly, our leadership skills correctly, oh boy, oh boy, 
because here you come. And I think most husbands do not want to see the wife coming. <laughs> At least that's my experience. We would be warned once. Hmm. And then twice. And then the third time, there is a little ceremony called dehorning. Now that meant that we have a special hat called the gusto way. And of course, being a hat, we wear it on our head, obviously. And a symbol of leadership within that hat were two small antlers, two small deer antlers. And here comes that lady for the third time with her team. And we didn't get it. The first time we didn't get it. The second time, third time you're out. And then sure. the horns were removed. Therefore, we were dehorned. Oh. <laughs> Susan B. Anthony was so impressed by the women that she cites the Iroquois power of women in her effort to get uh, voting rights for women. So we kind of sat back and looked at Susan B. Anthony and others in American society and saying, what don't you get? Now, the reality of that, and I know I'm not talking right now about the sturgeon or the maple, but I'm giving you background to place within your understanding a greater breadth of understanding of our culture. <clears throat> um, so just kind of in summary along those lines of, of power and the seven generations, the seven generations is such that when a man, again, through the influence of women, would make a decision, that decision has to be good for the next seven generations. Can you imagine the power? Can you imagine the responsibility? Can you imagine the creativity our leaders had to have? They had to think out, what is good for that baby? the baby's baby and going out and out. What is good for us as a people? How do we sustain our identity as people? Now you have to realize relative to my discussion today that I cannot speak for all tribes, nor do I. I cannot speak for all nations. There are about 360 uh, different federally recognized tribes in the United States of America. No now that does not include all of the indigenous people in Canada, Mexico, Central America, South America. So you have to have a greater mindset to understand us as people. Yes, in my language, I was using terms like Horonosani, longhouse people. But longhouse does not mean only the physical space, that building. But if you look at my hands are sort of intertwined, it also means how different tribes within the uh, Haudenosaunee, we have the Mohawks, the Oneidas, Onondagas, Cayugas, and the Senecas. We used to bicker, we used to fight. Our visionaries came forth and said enough of that. Through consensus building, we decided that we would join in peace and live in peace and harmony. So if this are these are the Mohawk people as an example, these could be the Seneca people that we used to be at war with all the tribes here, now we're united in peace. But how our visionaries kept the peace was such that these enemies now are my cousins. Isn't that beautiful? That's yeah. next up in generations. The Oneidas who were at war with the Onondagas are now cousins. So today, now I'm a member of the Turtle Clan. And the other tribes might have a turtle clan. 
So literally, if I meet people who are of the other turtle clan in that tribe, hey, how are you? Good to see you. You know, the hugs come out. Whereas perhaps four or 500 years ago, mm, something else came out. So longhouse does not just mean physical. It's how the piece is, is designed to be kept, honored, and appreciated. Before I get into a little bit more of the uh, presentation here, I'm going to show you a picture that I showed Mary. Yeah. You see that older lady there? I know you can't see it extremely well. And that lady is holding a baby. So let me just show it to you again. Older lady, younger baby. Baby's about two, roughly. That older lady is my grandmother. The baby that she's holding is my mother. Now, why do I mention this when we're talking about sturgeon and strawberries and things? Each of the people in this photo were taken by the government when they were children. And I get emotional. I can feel myself right now getting very emotional because I'm vulnerable. I'm sharing things with you that are personal. And I don't know how you're going to interpret, understand, and use the information. But you're good people. You're River Edge people. So I know you're going to um, honor me, if I can use that term, and the honor, honor of my memories here. These two people, my grandmother, as a child, someone came to the door one day and it was the Indian agent and took her. Sent her from Oneida, Wisconsin to the first Indian boarding school in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Now these are children. She was sent there for five years straight. Because it was so-called school, she had to learn what was considered white man's education, music, geography, um, bread making, all of those things. And on her records, it says, again, she was there five years. Her trade for five years of learning was sewing and laundry. In other words, she was being groomed to be a servant girl. On her records, it states that she had outings. And I'm thinking, Grandma, at least you could have a vacation. Wonderful. Get away from all of that. And she couldn't come home in the summer. Where did she go? Found out these outings meant that then she had to be a servant girl on the white farms uh, around her school. Um, and she had three different outings. She earned a little money, but the money had to be kept to buy her ticket to come home eventually. My grandfather was taken from his home in Oneida and sent to Kansas. And that was only one school. Wow. Then those two come home eventually. They fall in love. They marry. They have a baby that you just saw in that photo. And then the government came and took her, my mother. Oh my. Oh, man. my mother never survived it. My mother could not talk about it. Indians today do not talk about it. They can't. Psychologically, they are devastated yet, as I still am in terms of the culture then is ripped, it's gone. So what we're gonna to hear today is also a day of celebration because by explaining to you, my heart now sings because we kept the longhouse traditions. We look at the water differently. We look at that tree differently. Soon the thunderstorms will be coming. Oh. And in our way of thinking, the thunderstorms come, why? Because warm weather is coming and colliding in the atmosphere. 
in that air that mother gives to us, mother. And then the thunder cracks that tree, moves that tree a little bit. And because of the warm weather, the sap begins to flow. It's like the blood within our veins. Everything then has an interconnection. I'm going to show you as well as I can, a turtle shell. Mm, beautiful. What did I say? Turtle shell? Hmm, not really. It's a calendar. The back of it. Sure enough. The front of it. Now, the back of it is not too pretty, but the front of it has tremendous information. Did you know that on the back of a turtle, there are 13 major scales? Sure. If you had this in your hand, you would see what I'm talking about. Sure. I said 13. Sure. Why did I say 13? Why is that significant? And it is not an unlucky number. It is a beautiful number. 13, because there are 13 full moons of the year. Not 12. We know that. Right. There are 13 full moons of the year. And right now, down here, and I know you can't see it well, but there is a scale here. Third scale on this calendar. And it's the maple moon. Oh. So each one of these is named according to our tradition. Oh, fun. Now I said 13 moons, but how do you, but how many days in a month then? I thought there were 30. Turtle helps us. Turtle's name is Atnoval. Atnoval. Turtle. Atnoval. The turtle speaks to us and gives us knowledge. On the outer edge of the turtle shell, there are 28 smaller scales on the edge, 28. That's how many days there are in a month. So when you count 28 and 28 and 28, each one of those 28s has a full moon. So another 28, another full moon, another 28, another full moon. So now we know we're over here. The moon, the maple moon, the thunder, but it's all interconnected. Because at the same time, the water that we need to boil the, the <clears throat> maple is beginning to thaw. So there's a relationship, isn't there? And the people come out of the longhouse after that long, terrible, cold winter, but they're refreshed by the warmer air. So there's energy, there's excitement. And when the maple flows, we begin to taste it. And it is said, even in the old days, people used to lay under <clears throat> the twig that had pierced the bark of that maple tree. And then the maple would drip down that twig and people could lay under that twig and just, just relish and enjoy. But the concept is not just the not just the, the, the syrup flowing, but it's the bounty of the great creator that's flowing. He's giving us another blessing. Each of these moons give us another blessing in a sense. So we go into Thanksgiving. We burn the tobacco. And we do not hoard and say, this is mine. No, 
we are related now to each other. So we listen, we share, but we pray and we give thanksgiving to the great creator. So I wanted you to understand <clears throat> this turtle shell, but don't see it as a turtle shell only. See it as a reminder every month of the gifts of the great creator and how we can use them. More specifically now, relative to the maple ceremonies, it is said that in March, <clears throat> excuse my voice, that we approach the tree with reverence. We don't see it as a commodity to be owned, to be sold, to be disregarded for its own innate beauty. But then we take the knife with reverence after we offered the tobacco in Thanksgiving, we slice into that tree. And it is said that the length of that slice is the palm of your hand. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah. It's interesting to me. Then we uh, cut into that bark two or three fingers into the tree. Then we insert a stick into the interior of that beautiful gift giving tree. And then eventually, well, let's go the other way. Event, eventually the sap, as I mentioned before, begins to come on its journey. We collect it into a pot and then we add that water from the river. We boil, we wait, and then we sing, we get excited, we joke, we talk to each other, we, we air ourselves out in that new, fresh, warmer air, and there's hope, and we give thanks. Did you know that? No, such a wonderful time of the year. And my mother was taken away. Her mother was taken away. My grandmother, from that picture, one day was singing what some people call a thunder song. A thunder song is taught to the children in some cultures, a song to be sung when you are devastated, alone, fearful. And sometimes I have read stories and been told personal stories where the parents, the father was telling his son as he was being taken away in a buck wagon to one of the schools, sing your thunder song, sing your thunder song. And a song is a song of resilience. A song, thunder song, is a song calling upon the great creator for protection. My grandmother sang, Ja gato ne ne o ne ya. The matron came, slapped her. My grandmother was burned with lie on her tongue so she would not sing her song. They put her in a jailhouse at the Carlisle School for three days and bread and water. And then she come out and she say in subservience, now I be a good girl. You beat it out of me. Now I be a good girl. So the maple syrup 
is one of many ceremonies of the Horonosane that we celebrate. We retain, we grab onto, of which we are tenacious. Because while we're not maybe celebrating it on our traditional lands, we celebrate it in the heart. Now, moving on a little bit, we got some other people to talk about, in a sense. Recognize that. Mary knows about this. <laughs> Mary, what do you know about the Sturgeon Fest? Well, they are due to start spawning here in about a month's time. So we're looking forward to their return, not just to the rivers, but also eventually to River Edge, too. And do you see again how important this is to all our cultures? This animal right here is about 250 million years old. Wow. He has sustained us and multiple cultures on Mother Earth. And so, excuse me one moment. I'm just going to. I think my camera uh, went a little dim here. One moment. Okay. It's going up pretty well here. Is it? Okay. I'm just going to. I think I can correct that right now. At least mine. There we go. All right, excuse me for that. No so this guy, Gaiji, Gaiji in our language, has been here. He's been looking at you for 250 years. Of all cultures, it seems, there are records about his existence. What does he know? Where has he been? Now he's here. He's spawning. He's getting ready for his next seven generations. He wants that clean water. He wants his space or her space to spawn. They're going to raise their babies. And they're going to say, baby, it's time for you to go. I want some grandchildren. Right. And then they're going to flow into that water. And then Mary's going to come around and she's going to tag them one day. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then we're all going to get a certificate because we can adopt one of these babies. And then we can watch where they flow in that water. And yes, we'll catch them. We'll be on Lake Winnebago, maybe. But that's sport fishing. Right. And I get it. I get it. But let's honor the creation that Mother has given to us also. And not just have a beer because we got the big one. <laughs> oh. Am I preaching? I think I'm preaching right now. <laughs> so... The sturgeon in the Iroquois culture was harvested not much differently than what we do in the modern world. There were nets. We knew how to uh, put wares in the river or wherever it might be because we followed the habits. We observed. But at the same time, the tobacco came in terms of honor and thanksgiving. So our culture is very spiritual, very observant beyond the normal expectation. Now, do maple, does, excuse me, um, does maple syrup 
and sturgeons kind of go together? Is there a connection there more directly? Yeah, there is. Pardon, Mary? That's a good question. Same time of the year, they both become active. Mm -hmm. But after that long, long, long winter, we can harvest the fish, we can prepare it, but now what do we have as a seasoner? Uh, yeah, there you go. The maple syrup can be used upon that food source. Wow. And there we go. <laughs> and then we can say to, to other people, you know, in a way, hey, did you sprinkle that maple? Did you sprinkle that maple on 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 the gaji? On the, on the sturgeon? Think about that. Extend the thought beyond, and you'll see more beauty. You will see more beauty. Now, this sturgeon then has to interact and perhaps even eat some of the other fish. So it, it, there is such a cycle of life. There is a cycle as I mentioned briefly, that by observing the calendar, this is strawberry month, this is that month, this month, that month. So around Mother Earth then is great beauty and great honor. There are many books that are written um, about, I'm just gonna grab one here, excuse me one moment. I got a couple things on my desk. That again, give us great information, joy of reading. This is called the first strawberries. It's a Cherokee, it's a Cherokee Indian story about the strawberry. And basically what that story is, and it's interesting, there was a husband and wife, and guess what happens? There's an argument. I have no idea what that's like, but I mean, I heard about them. <laughs> I'm trying to be humorous here. So they go on their separate ways. They're walking and the great creator begins to feel sorry for them, but she's mad, she's mad. And he keeps going his way. Eventually the great creator has some sorrow for them. And in front of her, as she is on that journey of walking away, he begins to use the sun to warm the earth. And as she's walking, the great creator places in front of her some berries. Oh, one day it's a blackberry. No, she's not impressed. Then it's a blueberry. Oh my God, she's still not impressed. The next day there's another berry. But then one day, there's another berry and it's different. It's bright and shiny and it's red. And like all the other berries, you know, she picks it up and thinks, what is this? Another berry. Oh my goodness. It's sweet. It's not like the other berries. It's colorful. It's warm. It's a gift. She bites into it again and she relishes it even more. And then with a heart of compassion and understanding, she begins to think, this sweetness I should share with my husband and forgive, understand. So she turns around, yes, she finds her husband. 
And you know what she did. She offers him a sign of forgiveness through sweetness, but it's a gift from the great creator. These are our stories. These are our morals. Yet my mother was taken away. Here's another book. Mary, sounds like you know what it is. I do. We're very familiar with that book here at Riverbridge. Mm -hmm. Right? 13 moons on turtle back, on the turtle's back. And the book is such that each little chapter is devoted, and I know it's hard to see, I understand that. Um, each chapter is devoted to a moon. But like I said to you, there are so many different nations and tribes in North America that uh, this is sort of generic. But amongst my people, the uh, Iroquois. Oh. That's our specific calendar for us and our language. Sure. Wow. So the reason I ha had mentioned my mother and my grandmother, grandparents, and other relatives who were taken is because I'm expressing the joy of my culture, that culture which my mother and her parents could not fully appreciate and understand. Now, I do a lot of lecturing on the Indian schools, um, but that's a whole different topic. And today we're going to concentrate on what we are. Most recently, <clears throat> I had an Oneida Indian artist complete a pair of moccasins for me. Beautiful. And I'm trying to be careful here. And I want you to notice my vest, if you can, a little bit. Sure. Why would a grown man wear a pair of moccasins that are traditional Iroquois format with strawberries on them. Why would a man wear strawberries? And on my vest, strawberries, my, my shoes have strawberries. And then another uh, artist for me at a different time made this for me. Beautiful. It's a be beaded strawberry. Wow. Maybe you already know the answer. It's just part of the mother spirit, the mother earth gift to us. The strawberry is one of the first fruits here in this area. And think about it. The strawberry is the first sweet fruit that really comes up through mother earth's ground, taking that sun taking the water and then gives us that beautiful, beautiful, sweet fruit we call the strawberry. We get excited because we wait for the messengers to come and tell us that the strawberry is ready. And who are the messengers? The messengers are the young children because they're short. They can see under that strawberry plant, as you know, which is short, the leaves kind of covered the fruit. So we, the tall people, eh, we have a disadvantage. But the great creator made children to have their advantages. 
their knowledge, their insight. And in this case, their shortness is a good thing. I say. Because the messengers see the strawberries under there. And they can tell us the strawberries are here. And then guess what? And then the next month on the turtle shell is another whole creation coming again. Isn't that a beautiful way to see the life in the world? Sure is. Mary and I talked a little bit before, again, about the state of affairs in our world. If only people could live according and sometimes to our traditions. To see that we were enemies, but now we're cousins or we're family. And not to say that water is mine. Not to look at a forest and say, ooh, if we cut that timber down, we'll make some money. Of course, there's reality. I get it. All cultures evolve and change. I understand that. Cannot live, as some people say, in the past. But what about the values of appreciation and honor, dignity, respect? So on the little journey today, yep, we talked about a fish, but we talked a lot more than fish. We talked about strawberry, but a lot more than strawberry. We talked about water, but a lot more than water. So what I'd like to do at this point is certainly we have 15 minutes left as planned. And observations, it doesn't have to be the big important question, but what are you thinking? What, what are you appreciating? <clears throat> First of all, I'm appreciating River Edge for this opportunity and, and Mary. So if somebody has an observation or a thought, something you didn't know or something you want to challenge me about or so feel free to unmute yourself now and, and you know, add whatever thoughts you might have or questions you might have. I, I know as you were explaining or describing the strawberry, I could almost taste it. Uh, and I think all of us look forward to not just the strawberries, but, you know, this time of the year, we're all excited about, you know, the first tree that starts to drip and, you know, the promise of all that maple syrup that comes from the trees at this time of the year and, you know, uh, I think the best part of this time of the year is to see spring come one day at a time. There's always something new out there. You know, a new bird that showed up in your backyard or the fact yeah. that we're seeing chipmunks out there now. Mm -hmm. or whatever it might be, it's, it's just a very fun time of the year. So how about other people that are on this, uh, you know, this call today? If, if, is there something you want to add? How about you, Deb? I just was curious um, when you were talking about um, the tobacco and gratefulness, and I, I would just be curious about when the um, sturgeon are spawning some of the traditions that are used um, when um, during that that time and when the eggs are being taken. I, I've never gone to see that, but I have heard just some of the traditions that are used to help show your gratitude. I would just maybe if you could share that, I would like to hear a little bit about that. But thank you so much for all of the information you gave. Thank you, Deb. Well, one of the things you're seeing right now in terms of showing appreciation for the fish or the strawberry or whatever it might be is the lighting um, of tobacco. This is also called sage or sweet grass. There are different elements. So typically the first thing we would do is take that tobacco pouch that we might have, sprinkle it into the water or into a turtle shell here. This is a clam shell, excuse me. Sure. And uh, we'll take the sacred eagle feather now this is a real sacred eagle feather and only Native Americans can own it. 
and then we can offer blessing. At the same time, it's also used for purification because I have to approach the great spirit as pure as I can. So I'll take the sacred eagle feather and then I can waft that purifying smoke toward myself to purify my, my head. And then I lower it and I would again waft it toward my body. And then the third time, lower to my legs. I say nothing, but I take it. I can take it with a feather if I have, or I can take it with my hand. And then the most beautiful thing about the ceremony is then I offer it to you. Oh, lovely. Do you get this sense of it's not just me? No. Overall? It's not just me. And then we share. There is um, an item in my collection. It's a replica of what we call a Watacha bag, a Watacha. That's from more of the Sioux tradition, Watacha. <clears throat> and what it is, is it's an original doggy bag. <laughs> We don't hear that word too much anymore, do we? That express doggy bag, we don't, we don't use that too much anymore. But <clears throat> when the Sioux, in the sense of extended family members and sharing the bounty of Mother Earth and the great creator, there was a pouch. And at the end of the meal, that food was shared perhaps with the elderly or those who were in need and they would then, after the meal, give that bag to that person or that family because that food is not mine to keep. I don't own that food. The concept is I share the food. And that's why we laugh. And that's why we dance. And we dance in a circle. Why? Because it's reminiscent of perhaps the calendar in a sense or mother earth in and of itself so i can take my spirit stone and if you notice how round it is this is natural this is the way my son found it and gave it to me wow and i know what it is i know why he wanted me to have it it's an item such that when I'm walking alone, walking to the great silence, I can take that stone, put it into my hand and roll it round and round and round as I'm walking, as I'm meditating, as I'm praying. Why a cold, hard stone? because it's not a cold, hard stone. It's the symbol of Mother Earth. It's the symbol of the eggs, the roll from the sturgeon. It's the symbol of that raindrop that's now coming. It's the symbol of the robin egg. It's the symbol of my eyes to see you as I am right now. It's the symbol of my mouth to speak. My ears, in a sense, are round to hear you, to hear a joke, to hear your story of loss, perhaps, in your life at some time. It is round like my heart that beats the gift of life. And it's the shape of a woman when she is pregnant. Yeah. Did you know that? Do you think? Wow. Or do you see us as Indian? Just Indian. No. I am not just Indian. I am Horonosane. 
Moni on tehkää, että valo liivan tänne. I'm not Polish. <laughs> I'm not German. <laughs> My father was from Mexico. Indigenous. I'm not Irish. <laughs> I, as I say, I is who I is, and I am wonderful being whom I am. I think. That that answers. Does that give you some insight into what you were asking, Deb? Okay. Sure does. Wow, Thomas. someone reminded me of a turtle egg. The minute I saw it, I thought, turtle mm -hmm. eggs are brown like that and almost the same color. Yep. Wow. And then how mm -hmm. relaxing that must be to roll that yep. around. Like, like it a is. Stone, I think is what I've heard some people refer them to, you know, they, they um, take your mind off of other things and yep. kind of Yep. It troubles over to that stone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. So when you burn the tobacco, um, is that done before you take something from the land or is that done after as a thank you after? You do it before. before. You do it before. Yeah. Oh yeah. It okay. it is always done before. And uh, one little story, uh, Mary, uh, when I was doing your, one of your um, blessings, I think this was not at where we do it now. I, I think it was in Mequon. But right. anyway, um, I was doing the blessing and calling the spirits to come. Now, when I say spirit, we only have one spirit, and that's the great spirit, but symbolically uh, speaking. And unbeknownst to me, until much later when people said it to me, as I'm giving the blessing, an eagle began to fly above me oh, and wow. above us, it wasn't just me. Wow. And when I heard about that eagle being present and offering its wisdom, you, can you imagine my heart? Oh, sure, amazing. You know, oh, it, wow. It was an amazing experience. For sure. Wow, I have to wonder if, you, if it knew, you know, that we were seeing a surgeon there that day. It was quite something, quite something. Incredible vision they have. Wow, mm -hmm. other questions, other things people want to add or um, <clears throat> know about. So I know that um, Richard, you've been making these baskets. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? I know you sold them. Here in, in our bookstore and at Surgeon Fest, and uh, they are uh, amazing you know, creations. Uh, uh, you know, you have, you're quite the artist. My son and I are what we call antler basketry. It's a little um, sole proprietorship that uh -huh. he and I have. And we create these unique baskets, as you can see. You notice, of course, that the central part of it is a deer antler. These are unique. Nobody else in the nation really knows the complete process. I wow. learned from wow. a member of my tribe. This is not uh, original. Um, how do I want to say it? This is not traditional. The Iroquois people did not use these baskets as I have just shown you. This is a contemporary version of a basket. Oh. So what we do is we take the individual um, antler and it is a shed antler. And a shed antler means that the, the antler naturally fell from the deer and these antlers fall every year and then the deer grow new ones, but every year they fall. And when they fall to the mother earth, they lay there. And if you look at some of my baskets very carefully on the tine, you might see bite marks and it doesn't look real smooth sometimes. And guess what? I call those beauty marks. 
because that means that when that antler fell to Mother Earth and laid on that ground, perhaps a little mouse came and had some nutrition. The chipmunk came. The squirrel came. So that deer offered its, its meal to the smaller animals. Or sometimes there's an antler and part of it might be broken off because that big stag was in a fight. So it tells stories. Now the big story here, again, on the antler, the antler itself, and I mentioned before that when a man became a leader, a symbol of his leadership in his headdress were two small antlers. That way, in the crowd, in the community, when you saw a man with that symbol, then you would know he is a leader. Oh, he's the one. We might use the word chief, but a lot of the words we use would be sachem. He's a sachem. He's the leader. But how did he get there? Through the nomination process of women. How did he get out of power? Through the power of the dehorning ceremony, as discussed by our faith keeping mothers, the faith keepers. And don't forget about Susan B. Anthony. I want that to be made aware. So the antler then is a symbol of leadership. And why do I use that antler? Because it tells the story of the leadership of the role of man and women. So when I lecture, I tell the story of our constitution, the Iroquois constitution. And did you know that our Iroquois constitution was the basis for the United States Constitution. There's, I give a whole big lecture on that. And also, did you know that my 10th grandfather, going back to the Revolutionary War period, was a trusted and favorite friend of George Washington, really? my grandfather. Wow. His name was Us Canadoha. Now, you'll never remember that. No. Us Kanadoha. Us Kanadoha was such a friend that during the Revolutionary War, Us Kanadoha, in consensus building, agreed with George Washington that he, the Oneida Sachem or the Oneida Chief, would send our men to be soldiers with George Washington. And yeah. eventually we defeated the British. Wow. You don't know that. Was that in your history book? Oh, sure wasn't. Of course not, because we're Indian, you know, Indian. Right. And do you also know that in Washington, DC, in the Masonian, no, sorry, in the um, National Museum of the Native American, up on the fourth floor, there is a life-size sculpture of my grandfather and George Washington. Really? Oh my goodness. How proud you must be. Wow. My mother didn't know that. I bet not. What a shame. That's all that in your history, your family history. Mm -hmm. So when I produce these baskets. Do you think I tell the story behind it? Well, I hope you do at least a little bit. And I do. Uh, so I do a lot of lecturing. Um, right now I'm consulting. I, last uh, semester I consulted for the Green Bay Public Schools on how the faculties can interact with Native children today because many of them still do not know their stories or their parents are most likely grandparents, 
were sent to the boarding schools and there's so much dysfunction in families now because of that upheaval. So I do a lot of lecturing, I, I do what I can. Um, next semester, I'll be consulting for the Shano Public Schools under contract. And um, I work a lot with uh, local public schools to do what I can. Um, sometimes I cry because I feel so isolated. Sometimes I, you know, there's a sense of, is it worth to do this? And yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. yes it is. So Mary, thank you for asking about that. Um, I do a lot of art shows. Um, I come into your home and we can make a basket together or um, small groups of people. Wow. And I, I relish it, I enjoy it. So get the word out, would you please? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> needs a, a basket, <laughs> I'm here to help. Oh get the word out. So we are about out of time. Is there any last question you'd like to ask Rick before we leave the program here today? Uh, I'm not seeing any hands up at this moment. So I guess we will just uh, thank Rick for, for an incredible program. And we learned so much and uh, so many things for us to look forward to here as spring comes. Um, and we're all looking forward to that first strawberry. I think all of us may have had a first case of sap already, but you know, the strawberries are yet to come, so something to look forward to. I uh, also want to remind people that our um, next key and topic is actually March 24th, uh, and the speaker that day is Russ Green, uh, and he will be speaking about the Wisconsin uh, Marine Sanctuary that's devoted to our uh, shipwrecks right off the coast, mm -hmm. of, uh, right here from Fort Washington all the way up to Manitowoc. So, um, I think a lot of us would like to know more about that and the shipwrecks that, that are out there. Uh, so it should be a good program too. So join us on the 24th. I think Rick has one more thing to add to, to today's program before we sign off. Uh, a commercial break here. <laughs> I was at uh, Home Depot the oh. other day and they're selling little uh, kits in, in, a, in a bucket, metal little bucket. Oh. The strawberry plants. Really? And I, I was thinking I need to get one of those and start growing my strawberries now. Oh, sure. And uh, we had one up like last year or so. They oh. work. You can actually get strawberries out of them. So oh. also the next time you walk down your uh, grocery store lane in the produce department and you see strawberries laying there, now you know the rest of the story. For sure. Yeah. We all thank you, everybody. For our next yeah, go, yeah, go. Which is my language for thank you. Yeah, go. Yeah, go. Nigiwa. Nigiwa means see you later. Nigiwa. See you later. Or, adios. And everyone else. Good to see yeah. you all this afternoon and join us again on the 24th. Have a great afternoon and enjoy spring as it comes. I'll sign off now. Oh. Oh, okay. Thank you.